for many years now, this is how we start all our services by saying 2 Peter 1.21 from different translations. So is there anybody with another translation that maybe says something like under the influence or intoxicated by? Moved and impelled. Moved and impelled, amplified. Under God's direction of the Holy Spirit. Anything else? They were guided by the Spirit. Okay, if you got that 26 translation, which is called the Word that I had here one night, you'll see that most of them will not say what King James or Amplified say. They will say, holy men intoxicated under the influence of. That's more true, you know. Uh, you can see when somebody's under the influence. You don't so much say somebody's under the influence, you know. You've got to see it. <laughs> you know, if a guy walks straight, you don't know if he's drunk or not. You can't say that person is under the influence of alcohol. But there's a certain thing that happens to him that can make you say he's under the influence. You know, his direction changes. His sense of stability and balance change, you know. His eyesight looks different, you know. He looks like the one eye is saying go, the one says stop, the one says turn left, the one says turn right, you know. And his balance, sense of balance, you know, you seem like, you know, the roof is there, the walls are there, but you struggle to find the floor. You know, that type of thing, you know. <laughs> under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So tonight, if people are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, under the influence, what happened is they spoke. Okay? And I remember... Seven years ago, God really spoke to my heart and said, if you can really come into the influence of the Holy Spirit, the thing that God will get control of is your tongue. Okay? If God can get control of your tongue, you know, in, in James chapter 3, it says, if any man stumble not in word, this man is a perfect man, a fully developed character, and able to control and curb the entire nature of human being. So you can curb and you can get your whole personality, your whole character tamed if you can get your tongue in the, under control. Now it says, all wild animals can be tamed by natural forces and natural influences and natural man. It says, but the tongue no man can tame. Okay, now people say, what's the use if you can tame a crocodile, a lion, a tiger, a leopard, but you can't tame your tongue? No, he says, the natural man can tame a lion and a tiger and a crocodile. So any natural man can say to a lion, yo, sh yo shut up, you know? But he says, the tongue, no man, what is the context? Natural man. The natural man cannot tame the tongue. So how must you tame your tongue? By being supernatural. So if we look at that and we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 2, where Paul talks about the crucified Christ, you know, I want to know nothing amongst you except Christ and Him crucified. Then he goes on to say, you know, what eye hath not seen and ear hath not heard, verse, chapter 2, verse 9, that God is revealed to us by the Spirit. But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God. Thank you. Okay. So the natural man cannot receive spiritual stuff, but the spiritual man. Okay. So what is the spiritual man? He's the man that can get control over his tongue. So this book was not writ by, written by natural forces. Holy men wrote as they were the, under the influence of the Holy Spirit. No, they didn't write. It says they spoke. The one says, okay, so what what happens if the Holy Spirit gets control of my tongue? If I can get under the... I will speak stuff that God will say, Ah! Ewena, that's good, man. I like it. God likes it when we speak spiritual stuff. Okay? So God, get control of my tongue. Hmm? How many... I mean, when I spoke a lot about the tongue, you know, I said to people here in the late 90s, I said, would you take your Bible and stick out your tongue and see if you can see the thing? And if you can see it, say, if it wasn't for you. First Samuel chapter 10, and uh, you can do verse 6, you can do verse 10, verse 11, you can do chapter 11, verse 6. It says the following, the Spirit of the Lord... Oh man, I like, I'm going to talk a little bit on this. The Spirit of the Lord. 
okay, shall come upon you. I like that. That's called anointing. Okay? And what shall happen to you? You shall be turned into another man. Okay, now how many know, how did they recognize that Saul turned into another man? He started speaking when he came amongst the prophets. Remember, the Bible says, this is where the saying comes from, is Saul also among the prophets? Remember, there was a, a bunch of prophets coming down the mountain, and they played their soldiers and harps, and, and they were prophesying. And Saul came in their midst, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And the minute the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, his tongue was touched, and he started prophesying. The Bible says, but when he left the prophets, he could do so no more. In other words, he could only speak the stuff of God under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we have the whole Old Testament. The Spirit of the Lord came upon and he said. The Spirit of the Lord came upon and he declared. The Spirit of the Lord came upon and he prophesied. The Spirit of the Lord came upon and he prophesied. The Spirit of the Lord came upon and he spoke. Okay? So the Spirit of the Lord right through the Old Testament as the Spirit of the Lord came upon. They didn't start doing a jig. They didn't fall down and scream. The first thing that happened right through the old, that's why we have a Bible. Holy men of old spoke as the Holy Spirit got them under his influence. But what it boils down to, he says, the tongue is a world of iniquity. It's a fire that's set on fire by the flames of hell. So here from the bottom of hell comes flames. It burns. It gets control of your tongue. And you say, you you say, set on fire from hell. Okay? What? The tongue. Okay, so, and this is what God showed me in 1978. I remember it was so awesome when I saw it. I saw these flames, and I read a book. The book's name was uh, Hung by the Tongue. And the other book's name was Get Your Tongue in Check. And what I'm going to say now wasn't in one of the books. But while reading the books, I got the revelation. So the one says, hung by the tongue. So it had this rope, you know, you know the gallow rope, you know. And you saw this guy's tongue, bleh, you know, hung by your tongue. You know, what you say is what you get was the good books, but this one was the bad, bad side, okay. And the other was, get your tongue in check, was a study on the book of James. And as I was reading the books, I just saw this vision of the flames of hell getting on. And God said, I got a plan. If the fire from hell can make their tongue say that, what if it can send fire from heaven? So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. All of a sudden there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind, and there were seen of them cloven tongues like as of fire. Tongues of fire that divided themselves and sat upon each of them and they all began to speak okay so tongues of fire all of a sudden they changed from weather broadcasters to mambres pagro shahava rihi kiboko shaha lemondo shikitaba. And all of a sudden the timid, intimidated disciples turned into bold prophets of the Almighty God because God said, If I can get the Spirit upon you, I can get control of your tongue. The natural man cannot change the tongue. Tame the tongue, get the tongue under control. But if the Spirit of God can get a hold of your tongue, you can start speaking stuff. This is how we got our Bible. Holy men spoke as they were under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Okay? In the last days. Now, we hear a lot about that. But when anybody speak about last days, this is what they speak about. Catastrophes, pestilences, Wars, 
calamities, destructions, persecutions, antichrist, false prophets, beasts, marks of the beast, antichrist, chips under your skin. You know, they talk about all this stuff. When God speaks about last days, He says, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'm going to pour it out on your sons and your daughters. I'm going to pour it out on your servants, my men servants and my maid servants. And God says, the minute I pour out my spirit, I'm going to get control of their tongues. Because the minute they get the spirit, they shall prophesy. And the minute they prophesy, that's the people, God says, I will do wonders. Okay, on the earth, that is the I am God. So God is waiting for people to get the Spirit of God in and upon them to prophesy because God wants to do wonders. So God is standing there and says, I'm supernatural. I am supernatural. I am spirit. I am spirit. I am supernatural. Looking at a lot of natural people on there say, will one of you get out of the natural into the spirit? The minute you get into the spirit out of the natural, it means your tongue will be under control. If I can get somebody to step out of the natural under the influence of my spirit and prophesy, I'm going to start acting with wonders in the heaven and wonders on the earth. So God's not just going to pour it out. God pours out his spirit. Then he's waiting for people to catch the spirit then he's waiting for those people that got the spirit to open their mouths and say stuff uh, so let's go to Romans chapter 10 <sighs> verse 4 Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man that doeth, those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks. It says, say not in your heart who shall ascend into heaven. We had a great revelation about that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, to bring Christ down, who shall descend to the deep to bring. But what saith it? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Moses gave them living oracles to live by that is with us till today. But they refused him. Therefore, God gave them the law. Moses gave them living oracles to live by. How? He said, through the mediating of angels in the hand of him who was in the church, in the wilderness, referring to Jesus Christ. But they refused him who spoke. Who? Jesus Christ. Okay? So Moses had to get a law. Hmm? So first God give that, gave them living words. They refused it and he gave them killing letters. First it was a word to live by. Then it was letters to kill them. The one was spoken. The one was written. One came out of the mouth of God. The other one was in tables of stone. Okay? This one is called in Galatians, flesh. This one is called spirit. Okay? Hmm? Yeah, we're going to look at a few things. So, while you are in Romans 10, quickly turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. That's a good chapter to look at quickly. Uh, while we are in Romans 10, I think that can add a lot to that. And I trust God's going to bless you supernaturally, abundantly, out of your flesh, into your spirit. Okay? Hmm? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. 
we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believed therefore have i spoken we also believe and therefore speak you got that okay so man okay what would be the context now this is where we're gonna step a little bit deeper in about the stuff that god's been speaking to us for years so here's the one and then we have the other one we have the one and we have the other one okay what is this all about he says we have received the same spirit of faith now what does it say the righteousness which is our faith speaks now second corinthians says it's actually a spirit of faith and because we have the spirit of faith we speak why because it is written i believe therefore i speak and now we have a spirit of faith so we believe therefore we speak so if you believe you will say to this mountain be thou remo-. we've heard it over and over but when did you move the stuff i say god gives you god's gift to you is faith your gift back to god is belief so god stirs your heart to be- to have faith my gift back to god is i believe the faith that stirred my heart so faith gets me going so i jump out of the boat faith gets me going i jump out of the boat unbelief makes me sinking okay oh ye of little faith why did you doubt why did you get a second thought why did you start distrusting why did you start getting into unbelief so faith gets me going but believing keeps me going okay so how would believing keep me going by me keep on saying what my faith originally made me to say because we have the same spirit of faith as it is written i believe therefore i spoke therefore we also believe therefore we speak so faith start me speaking believing keeps me speaking how will i keep on speaking by keep on staying in the influence or under the influence of the spirit the minute i get natural i say the wrong thing i say i don't know i wonder i don't think so this will never come that is a proof you just stepped out of spirit and you back into natural when you start speaking i i don't know i wonder if what if say it doesn't come what if it doesn't happen what if it rains tomorrow you just proven to yourself and to everybody around you that you lost that touch of the spirit of faith that caused you to speak god's word holy men of old spoke under the influence of the holy spirit it's the holy spirit getting control of your tongue that'll make you speak stuff that'll make god do wonders speaking the wrong stuff cancel the wonders speaking god's stuff Do you want to get the context? Do you want to get the context? Look in 2 Corinthians 4 and jump back to verse 11. He says, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal, in our mortal flesh it's easy to remember second corinthians 4 11 i'll just put it here in a block for you second corinthians 4 11 says the life of jesus must be made manifest life of jesus manifest where in our mortal flesh okay then we add to that Romans 8, 
8.11. Romans 8.11 says, If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, He will quicken your mortal body. Okay, you're going to get the two together in a minute. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if that Spirit now dwell not come upon you once upon a Sunday after the worship service, once upon a pastor's conference, <laughs> once, upon, once upon a special service, you know. Every now and then when we have a special speaker, woo man, I was so drunk tonight. I the Spirit of God go and roll on me. Well, it was good. How about now letting him dwell in you? If he now dwells in you, he's going to quicken your mortal body. Okay? So the life of Jesus must be made manifested in our mortal flesh. So this which can die, which can get sick, which can get hurt, which can get scratched, which can get cut, mortal, must manifest the one that can't get scratched, can't die, can't hurt. Okay, so how will the immortal manifest in the mortal? He says, because we have the spirit of faith. As it is written, we believe, therefore we speak. So we believe, therefore we speak. So something must happen to your tongue by the Spirit of the Christ dwelling on the inside of you. Okay? Who is Jesus Christ? Thank you. The Son of God. Who is Jesus Christ? The Son of God. God so loved that He gave His Son. Okay? Who is Jesus Christ? The Son. The Son can do nothing if He doesn't see the Father do it. Okay. Here's Jesus. Nobody knows He's the Son of God. For everybody, He's just the Son of Mary. Blessed Mother. Okay. He's just the Son of Mary. So he's walking around. By the age of 30, he must have had conversations with a lot of people. He must have had people knowing who he was. They knew there's his brothers and there's his sisters. That's what happened in Mark 6. They were offended and said, who is he? Isn't his brothers and sisters with us? So they didn't know him as the son of God. They know him as the son of Mary and Joseph. Away in a man. Okay. So at a certain time, Jesus went down to the Jordan River where John was baptizing. He knew John. He was his cousin. They played together. Mary and Elizabeth were family. Mary had to visit Elizabeth in the sixth month of her pregnancy. When she just was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth got filled with the Holy Spirit. So they had a lot of, you know, they knew each other. So here is John, and all of a sudden he looks up and says, Hey. So he prophesies because he's filled with the Spirit. So all of a sudden his tongue gets loosened. He says, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the Son of... He just says it. The next minute here stands Jesus. He just said it in the Spirit. Now he says, Jesus, no, no, I can't baptize you, man. You must baptize me. Jesus said, no, 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 John. Uh, you better baptize me so that we can get all righteousness to be fulfilled. We're going to get rid of the do, do, do. And we're going to start getting to the say, say, say. Here comes Jesus out of the water. Here comes the Spirit in the form of a dove descending upon him. Heaven opens, Father speaks, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Here goes Jesus into the wilderness. Here comes the tempter. Here. Yeah. If you are the son, why don't you make the stone 
to become bread. Why don't you make the law come alive? We heard this over. So Jesus says, uh, uh, no, man shall not live by that stone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Quoting from Numbers, Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. So Jesus says, you know how we live? Living words is what I gave Moses on the mountain. They rejected the living word, so I have to give them a written word on stone. That only killed them. Now let's back up. Man shall not live by this one. Although I blow on it, it can't come. But it is written, man shall live by the word that comes out of the mouth of God. So Jesus said. So Jesus said. So Jesus said. And the devil. So Jesus comes out of the wilderness and he enters the synagogue find the place in the scroll Isaiah 61 where it is written spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to speak, preach the good news deliverance, healing of sight close the scroll and said this day this scripture is fulfilled in your then walked out of the synagogue and started speaking and the first thing that happens out of the synagogue this is Luke chapter 4 he's just out of the wilderness into the synagogue out of the synagogue they say what manner of man is this his word is with power he speaks not like the Pharisees and the scribes but his word is with power come on all of a sudden Jesus is recognized not anymore as the son of Mary and Joseph all of a sudden you must be the Christ you must be the son of God because you speak differently